Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Shelley Plum and I'd like to welcome you all back to this segment of From the Hip. Today, I'm going to take you back to this morning. I was enjoying my morning coffee and I'm looking through the internet and I'm looking at all of these financial resources. And my daughter happened to be sitting right next to me and she's asking, you know what, what are you doing, mom? And I, and I was telling her and it went into a conversation about budgeting and about rent and about how much water costs and what you need to, to prepare for for the future. And really, I set out in that conversation with really good intentions but as we were going through it I could see fear in my daughter's eyes she was scared she was scared of the finances and the daunting task of doing a budget and preparing for the future so you know it got me to thinking as I was driving to work you know finances are really very powerful aren't they I mean they have that innate ability of striking fear in our hearts I really believe that it is imperative that we all have a financial coach somebody who is really knowledgeable in finances that can help coach us through some of those uh, you know hard times that we go through at times so Today, we have a special show. We have a special guest with us today. We have Charlie Tutch. Now, Charlie is a financial coach, and she has a unique way of looking at finances that I think you'll find appealing. In a moment, we will be back with Charlie. Well, hey everyone, we are back and I'm here with Charlie. How are you, Charlie? I am so excited to be here, Shelley. Now, Charlie, you are a financial coach and really what intrigues me about you is what we were talking about before. You were talking about fitness finances. You coined that term, what does that mean exactly? Well, financial fitness, I have discovered, Shelley, is the same as environmental fitness, as nutritional fitness, as health and fitness, really there's no difference between all of them. It involves having strategies. It involves being able to implement solutions because we're inundated with information. We all know how to get skinny. We all know how we're supposed to make money. But then what do we do with it? How do we actually execute? Right. And so that's I think where my strong suit lies is that in the execution, I've got a few, I've got a few tips and tricks in my pocket to share. So that's interesting, and it's whenever we interview people, it's always refreshing when uh, people have walked the walk, and you definitely have. I mean, just in talking to you, what motive for our viewers out there? What motivated you to get into financial planning and financial coaching? Well, that's not hard to describe at all. I have a 14-year-old son, and I know that I'm not alone as a single parent. Yeah. And when it was presented to me, especially as his father had become more and more absent, what is his future looking like? What am I able to bring to the table? Where am I able to take this kid? And I want to show him the world. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that the path I was on is certainly wasn't going to get him there. And so it really made me kind of stop, step back, and take a look at where I was going. And what I realized in the process is that I am not alone. There are lots and lots of us in the world, and nobody's talking to us. You know, this isn't a conversation. It's, it's a lot like, you know, sex and money. Are, right. We're sort of conditioned to be um, very quiet about it. Um, you know, very, very correct politically, very polite. It's true. It's, it's very true. So I, I'm, I'm curious, so you resonated, I'm sure, with the story about my daughter, which is absolutely a true story. I look, it, she looked like I hit her because, it, I mean, it was, it was terrifying for her to even think about financial finances. You know, it, it, was, it was awful for her. So did your son take the same uh, approach to finances? Um, oh, uh, well, his approach to finances, mom, can I have 20 bucks? Mom, can I have, what, what can I do to earn? Right you know, yeah. 10 or $15. And it's funny because I've had to create 
um, strategies around the fact that for him to just be given money means yes. that I have to come up with another stream of income. Right. But really, I've kind of put it on him. It's been a great way for me to train him into how do you create income? Yes. And that's really the question that adults should be having. Right. How do we create more income? So as opposed to just shelling out five or ten bucks, or, you know, a lot of times kids are like, well, what can I do to earn right. the $15? Yes. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love you to wash the car and clean the toilet, but I still have to be able to come up with the extra 15, the extra 20 bucks mm -hmm. that he's going to need. So yes. somewhere in my budget, I have to figure that out. And that's got to be you know it's got to be something to be considered we can't just it can't just be outgoing right. so the conversation then becomes let's put our heads together and let's figure out what we're good at or what we could market what are we uh, what can we put out in the world that's worth a few dollars not just from your mom but yes. from the planet at large right which is great because then it becomes a conversation about how to raise your value in the marketplace how does then this 14 year old become a value to his community to his society and that begets a, an even an even greater and even better conversation because we all probably were raised mm -hmm. on go to school yes get a really good education go get some more education <laughs> because then hopefully you'll get a really good job right and work for 20 or 30 years and life will be good yes it, it, it is tough and but as I, we know that's not happening no and I respect what you do because it really you're looking honestly I look at it in tears and what I mean by that is what you do is you coach the younger generation those in midlife and then probably those that are elderly and each have probably different needs and wants yes. at those levels as well so let's start with our youngsters you know those that are 14 15 16 17 18 even uh, what do you tell them what are some of the tips that you you tell them to prepare them for the road ahead well I think just starting the conversation about money yes. right it's not just about earning money it's about what you're going to do with the money. Um, one of my favorite quotes, I think, comes from Albert Einstein, and it says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Yes. If you understand it, you're earning it. If you don't understand it, you're paying it. So having a conversation with young people is so critical because, gosh, how many times have you said, Shelley, if only I knew then what I know now. Yes. If they start now with an understanding right. of saving and investing, compound interest over time will yield them, you know, a more positive and productive and prosperous future. Right. Whereas um, the millennial generation especially is of the mindset that they're not looking at the future. They're looking at, well, they got to go to school, they're incurring debt, and that debt that compound interest is where their retirement lies, right? If we're just mm -hmm. funding credit at a young age, it's, it's gonna lend itself to the idea that they're never getting out. So starting those conversations young with, where do you begin? Well, you gotta begin by understanding that you have to have a dollar here and a yes. dollar there, and like whatever you're working for, some of that has to pay you back first. Right, yes. And has to be put forward or put towards something that you're gonna do in the future. Right. A lot of what we see now is, you know, people don't have a lot of savings right now because they're not making enough to save. Mm. So whatever you can save, start now, right? Yes. Even if it's just a tiny bit because creating a habit. So for kids, just like it is for adults, it's so funny, the conversation truly is the same across the board. You have to start a habit. You have to start something that doesn't hurt. Right. You know, if I, t if I tell my son I'm going to give him $20 to go to the movies, but I'm going to keep five of it to go into savings, he's like, oh, mom, what? but I need that 20 bucks. Right, exactly. Yes. So you have to begin to have some sort of conversation that, that allows him to feel like he's still getting to have fun. Right. I don't want to take his fun, but the fun's going to be far greater and going to be far better right. if he starts a habit now. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. So for my daughter, as a parent, what I'm hearing from you Important conversations to have are working hard, saving your money, and preparing for the future. And really having that education or that knowledge surrounding money, not when you're in middle age or, or on, but really, it's really essential to have it when you're young. Well, and I really think too, because those are not new concepts. Like everything you just said, we've heard for our whole lives, mm -hmm. right? Work hard, save your money, prepare for the future. Well, why isn't that working? Because that's, that's, those are age old adages. Well, I think the reason it's not working is because 
especially when you're talking to kids, what's the conversation around um, the young people all the time? What do you want to be when you grow up? Yes. What do you want to do? Right? Well, that's an important conversation to have. Um, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? Well, how do we get there? Right. And once we're there, what does that look like? So it's not just about having them prepare career-wise for the future, but have them actually paint the whole picture. Where do they want to live? What kind of car do they want to drive? Mm -hmm. Kids are great dreamers. Adults suck at it. Like, we're so <laughs> afraid and we're so cynical. Right. So actually having those dream conversations with kids is a great way to begin because their imagination is still rich and it's unfettered. Yes. And it's unrestricted. It's isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so actually having those conversations, allowing them to be dreamers, writing down goals. What I know from being a fitness professional for all those years in the fitness industry is that if you write down goals, you are 50% more likely to achieve them. Period. End of story. Not my opinion. There's plenty of statistics to right. back that. No, it's true. So starting when kids are little, have them write those things down. What do they want to be? What do they want the pictures to look like? You'd be amazed if kids start writing that stuff down and then they revisit it periodically. They're actually formulating their their goal setting. They're actually putting their plan in place just by writing it down. Oh, that's great. That's a great. And that's so easy, right? Cheap and easy because yes. nobody has any more time and any more money to do anything. Right. So you have to pick strategies that somebody can actually implement, and that's a really great one to start with. I agree. I agree. So that's the younger generation. So let's fast forward now to middle age. What are some of the mistakes that you're seeing the middle age? Oh gosh, the list is so, it's endless. And, and I speak from experience because I've committed so many of the errors myself. And they would be, you know, we're great providers. Yes. Parents are ultimately great providers. Even people without kids with great careers, we're providing for ourselves, but we're not necessarily looking into the future, right? Um, I spent my career sitting down with people going, how do you want to meet your fitness goals? Well, you start with a game plan, yes. right? Well, the same should be true for your finances. How often are you actually sitting down and looking at, this is where I want to go. Am I actually on track to get there? We plot along, like we balance a checkbook, we balance our finances, we know what's outgoing. So I would submit, and again, it, it's certainly not my own creative ideas. I, I study all the time, and Grant Cardone, I think it's uh, in the Millionaire's Handbook okay. or Playbook, he says, we spend a lot of time budgeting mm -hmm. what's outgoing. Okay. Really what you might want to start looking at is, we already know what's outgoing, generally speaking. Yeah. We have to look at, instead of preserving the bottom line and maintaining what you've got going on, right. how are you going to raise the top end? Mm -hmm. How are you going to change what's coming in? Right. Because disruption is a fact of life and disruption is just a really polite yes. word for sickness, divorce, marriage, mm. birth. Somebody's got a birthday, somebody's got to go to Hawaii. All those things that get in the way of life. And we like to say that, oh my gosh, this just happened or life got in the way, but that's what life is. Mm. And if we're really busy just skipping over the fact that it's going to happen, mm -hmm. Shelley, so if you consider that all you're doing is budgeting for your expenses, some unexpected expense is going to come through and you're going to constantly be underwater. It's true. What if instead of worrying so much about the expenses, start worrying about how are you going to change what's incoming? How are we going to grow that? How are we going to increase that? What else can we do to get more coming in? Right. Because, and if you study a lot of the success coaches and the billionaires and the high performers, one of the things they're constantly talking about is, yes, you should be working hard, but if you figure out how it works, you can be making money in your sleep. Yeah, you want to get to a place where our bodies are, are finite, right? You only have so much energy and so much stamina. So if you have to show up for every hour of every dollar earned, you're only going to be within a certain capacity to earn. If your kid gets sick and you yeah. have to stay home from work and your body is required to be there to earn a dollar, right. you're up against it. And that's the world we live in. That's the, the way in which we go to work these days. You have to start looking at it from a standpoint of, what can I do to keep incoming with, without me having to show up for every bit of that. Right. And that conversation is a newer conversation for people that are my age, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. We've had a certain conditioning to go check in, be employed from nine to five, go home. Right. But man, if you can't show up to work, the paycheck's not coming in. And for a lot of people, that's devastating. So that is a very common way to think. And I think you'll agree with that. It's yep. almost, and forgive me, it's almost like a little rut that we get into. Yep. <laughs> so what is your recommendations for people out there that are in that rut? How do they get out? Wow, there are countless um, books and coaches 
teaching exactly on what you just said. And I think one of the major, one of the number one objectives that they try to implant in us is change your mindset. Okay. Start with a focus, right? Get rid of distraction. Okay. We are so completely distracted. Like we like to say, are you busy getting by or are you busy getting ahead? What mm, takes up yes. your income producing? Say that again. That's so really important. You're either busy getting by right? or you're busy getting ahead. Mm, okay. And once I, boy, once I started walking that and started really listening to that, it changed everything because it allows you to filter out the stuff the endless amount of incoming, right. right, attention getters and distractions from how do I want to get my family on vacation? How do I want to be sure that I can pay for my kids' braces? What are those that I need to focus on? And most of the great um, successful high achievers will tell you it's simply by, number one, eliminating the distractions. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the stuff that's keeping you from right. being on track. That is true, that is true, because it's, you know what, it's that old adage, you have to learn how to say no sometimes, and it, it's, it's true. And it's not a physical saying no, too, because we've been saying that for a while, and it makes perfect sense, and you think to yourself, well, I'm really good at it, but it's not human beings that are distracting you anymore, is no, it? No, no, no. We are surrounded and inundated, thank God, through technology and right. through social media, yeah. right? But you have to put filters on those. You have to be sure that you set time aside every day where you're going to turn off the email, turn off the phone, and focus on whatever is going to get you ahead, not get you by. That is true. You know what? That is absolutely true because you're right with technology, your phones, your computer, and you know, a life, like you were saying, that is life. It really is hard to taking, getting ahead really takes focus. It's being present right then to really plot that course. And if you don't have that time, where are you? Well, and I think as I listen to you kind of feed back to me what I'm trying to get across, I recognize, again, it's so true, just like the, fin the, the financial and the physical world and, and, and spiritual world, they all have such a great crossover. You know, when I was coaching, one of the things that I stopped doing when I was a professional fitness coach was I stopped coaching nutrition. You did. I stopped because after a while I realized it wasn't about coaching people what not to put in or what to put in. It was about what was going on in here. Uh -huh. And I realized that I was not a therapist, right? I could not get into their heads. Sure. And this dictates what goes in here. But that is true for everything. It's what you're feeding here yes. that dictates how you are achieving or not achieving, right? right? So behaviors, and a lot of times it's camouflaged. We don't know right. that we're being inundated. Like, you know, we didn't know how much sugar and salt they were putting in our processed foods until it really started to emerge, right? Well, we don't know. Like, if you were to look at 10 years ago, Shelley, how many subscriptions digitally did you pay for on a monthly basis recurring? I mean, uh, hardly any. Hardly any, right? Yeah. But can you think of a few now? Oh, that you, yes, right? absolutely. So that's Some outgoing. Some that I forgot about. <laughs> right? That's outgoing. Um, cell phones 10 years ago, yeah, everybody had them. Yeah, we all used them. But did we use the kind of data that we're using now? Did we pay for the kind of Wi-Fi high speed that we're using now? I mean, there's a lot of new expenses that have made their way in in such a subtle way that you forget you're shelling out more. Right. Are you bringing in more to match that? That's true. And when you really sit down and look at it, like if you do a comparison at my age to what I was outgoing 10 or 20 years ago, right. it's very different. That is a very different picture. It is. Yes. Sirius radio, Audible, Pandora radio. I mean, those are things that they add up, but they've been snuck in. Yes, it's, right? even, even your afternoon coffee. If you have coffee, you that, that adds up too. You know, you're talking, you're going to chuckle. You know what's coming to mind? It's my younger son. We were doing his science experiment last night, and we were talking about um, homeostasis. This is very similar to that. Very. Really, meaning, you oh, know. Oh, you're talking in. sexy oh. talk to me, Shelly. That is sexy That's talk the way to I me. I talk. No, I don't. Yes. Yes. So, very similar. Yep. Am I wrong? Nope. It's exactly the same thing. Like, you know, you're in a constant state of trying to stay alive. I mean, your yes. brain is constantly trying to right you, right? Just w in your physical state, but also in your mental state, right? And that's why I say people don't 
plan to fail, they're just failing to plan because there are so many things. The minute you get up in the morning, there, there's a great commercial and it talks about the woman, she gets up, she has coffee, she's got her kids to school, she's going to work, then she's got to take them to karate and then she's got to bring them home and then she's got to make the dinner. Like there's so much going on. If you say to her, well, do you have time to plan? No. Of course not. So yes. you have to figure out where in that hamster wheel that you're on, right. is there a commercial break long enough for you to actually take a quick snapshot of where you are and is it getting you where you want to be? And you have to create that time. And again, that's a mindset. Yes. That's mental. Right, um, 100%. And you know, uh, mental is, is, they're fundamentals that we call them. Right, yes. And they are mental. And you know, I, I lean on coaches. That's why I say, you know, having a coach is, Tony Robbins has a coach. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates has a coach, right? If these are people that are highly successful and they have coaches, what does that tell us? We need. We need somebody that's doing what we hope to achieve to tell us how to get there. Right. Someone that we trust. So I think that conversation helps us circle back to the need for a coach. I agree. I agree 100%. Because everybody's circumstances, it's really easy for me to sit here and tell you, take time out of your day. But I don't know what your day is filled with. Right. But I guarantee you if we sat down together, we could figure it out. But you've got to know that somebody's out there looking to help you get there. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Charlie, we're going to take a moment and we're going to break for our sponsor. And in a moment, we will be right back. Microgerm Defense is a green antimicrobial product. It is approved by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and comparable regulatory bodies around the world. It wipes out 99.99% of harmful germs and viruses with its nonstop active protection. The process for application is easy, fast, and safe. For more information, email info at microgermdefense.com or call 1-855-282-3338. Well, hey everyone, we are back and what a cool conversation that we are having. I, I really, I had not looked at finances that way. It's, it's really very intriguing. So you and you were tell, telling me earlier about the, the fitness. You are a fitness trainer, very good one, I know that. And into finances, how are those two professions, I'm curious, how are they similar? Oh my gosh, the more I go down this path, the more I realize it's all the same stuff. And it behooves me to say, first of all, you know, thank you, Shelley. Thank you for letting us have the conversation. Part of it is the fact that just having the conversation is a big deal. Um, how did I make the transition? Well, in the world of my work for 20 plus years, there are two major obstacles that everybody faced coming in to try to achieve what their challenges or overcome their challenges, there, there, there were two obstacles that, that they all faced. And I realized that those two challenges go across the board. Nobody has any time uh -huh. and nobody has any money. Oh, right. right. So if you yes. think about all those things that you would really like to do or you haven't done or, you know, the, 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 the concerns that you face, the problems that arise, what are the two main things around that? And generally speaking, it comes down to no time and no money. Okay. And when I started to have a conversation around money and I started to read and I started to educate myself and mm -hmm. I started to talk to people about it, I realized this is not unique. Yeah. This is happening every day, every second to right. everybody on the planet, right? Even the most wealthy people are challenged with time and money, right? So most of us, I realized we need to have a conversation around freedom, freedom of time, right? Time to me is so valuable. And the transition for my previous profession into my now lifelong career and passion is because I want to spend more time with my son. I realized that my yes. time is fleeting. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm not the only one. Um, uh, um, my father died when I was really young. My mom was very sick. So I have a great desire to want to live long enough to be an adult with my son. Like, right. I'm not rushing him, but I recognize that I really look forward to that day where you're sitting on the deck somewhere in your beach house and your friends, your, your son's friends are over and his family's over and you're getting to en enjoy, reap the rewards yes. of your, um, you know, your efforts as a parent. Really strong relationship, yeah. And that's no different, right? People want to achieve physical wellness because 
They don't want to be in pain anymore. They don't want to suffer anymore. Right. right. We get to a certain point where we're like, we will do absolutely anything to not feel the way we felt. Mm -hmm. And that is no different, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, don't you think? Yeah, no, no, I love that connection. I, I totally see that connection. And better yet, what I like is what you just said, is that there is that link between something in my daughter's respect that is so scary, that links to something so special like the relationship that you were talking about with your son. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. It's so cool, isn't it? Well, and I, and I know I'm gonna get to, because I believe that I, you, you, you know, what you think, what you conceive, you can achieve. That's one of the, the fabulous concepts that I hope to teach. But um, I recognize that we either don't live long enough or sometimes we're living too long. Yes. And that's where the financial piece has really become the biggest challenge for so many folks. Mm -hmm. You know, we're either losing people far too early and the families are left in the wake of not having planned for it, not been able to plan for it, nobody ever talked to them if something should happen. And I'm lucky enough that my coach had that conversation with me. Right. Right? You know, he leaned in and he said, Charlie, if something happens to you, what happens to Reese? Oh. And it changed everything yeah. for me. It what? changed everything for yes, me. Yes, I can only imagine. Yes. And, and I know that I'm not alone. And so if that conversation can simply be born everywhere we go, what kind of community would we have? What kind of village would we have? And people stepping out of just going, going, going. You know, we outsource our child care because we have to. Right? A lot of people don't even get to raise their kids because they're so busy having to feed their kids. True, true. And that disconnect is crazy. That's insane. Yeah. You know, the relationship you get to have with your family, that time to me is more valuable than anything. It's sacred. And that, that is, is what brought me to where, where we sit today. Right. I think that is powerful. Powerful, powerful. So, for our viewers out there, and they're watching our conversation today and are intrigued by you and what you do. Where, they, where can they find you? Well, um, we have an office in West Palm off 45th Street on Corporate Way. They also can see me at my website. Um, they're welcome to call, text me, smoke signals. Okay. Um, you know, I am reachable 24 seven, even if I'm not available at the moment, I would certainly return phone calls. And you know, I am, I am Portable. I am mobile. Oh, that's right? awesome. My okay. job is to come to people wherever I can. So, do you have any parting words of advice for our guests? Have the conversations. Right. Okay. Don't don't fear political correctness. Don't be scared around money. You know, the, the two topics that, that um, there's a great author, Jen Sincero. She wrote a book that I fell in love with called "You Are a Badass at Making Money." Okay. And one of the first things she says in chapter one is that we are conditioned around not having conversations about sex and money. And those are two topics that if we don't get in front of, we can already see it's the way it's affecting society, the way it's affecting our schools, the way it's affecting our workplaces. True. So the parting words I would love to leave with you is have the conversation with someone you trust, right? Are you on track to get where you're going? And if you're not, look for somebody who can help you get there. Look for somebody who is well on their way and get behind them. Ask if you can follow them. Ask if you can have coffee with them. That's what I've been doing. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, on behalf of the entire Plum Talk team, we'd like to thank you for joining us. This has been so much fun. And uh, we'll have you back again. Oh, Shelly, I just can't thank you enough. I'm so grateful because what you do provides for, oh gosh, so much benefit for so many people. And thank you. And happy Mother's Day. Well, so thank you. I hope you get and spoiled you rotten. Thank you very much. <laughs> what a great Mother's Day treat for me. Oh, so oh, I appreciate that very much. So great. So thank great. You. And we will be right back. Oh my goodness, this has been the most incredible conversation. And I'll tell you what, now uh, my drive to work and my drive back home are much, much different, my thoughts. I'm actually thinking about what I'm going to talk to my daughter about. And I really have a much more productive way of approaching this, thanks to Charlie. So until next time, this is Dr. Shelley Plum. This has been another segment of From the Hip.